Hey everyone, this is Zora, Smart Casuals, and in today's video, I'm gonna go over the top 10 mistakes that are most often done in Age of Apes when you're just starting off, and I'm gonna give you my tips on how to fix them. So the first mistake, and probably the most important one that I see a lot of players do when they're just getting started playing Age of Apes, is not joining a gang or specifically not joining the correct gang. So a gang is basically like an alliance. It's a group of players that you get to play with. If I go here, you'll see that this is all the members. So there's different ranks and there's different people at different power and everybody's helping each other. You also get a special chat where you can talk with people from your gang, as well as you get, first of all, helps, which make it so that all your buildings and your research go a lot faster. It takes a really big chunk out of it. In my top tips starter guide video for this game, I talked about how important help is, so check that out if you haven't seen it. As well as, you see there's gifts. So basically, people doing their daily quests or buying uh, purchases in the game for packages will give some of this to everybody. So if you see I claim it all, that's only a few days worth, you see that I get quite a lot of like random items. Now, every day I collect, I can have more and more of this. Uh, it's very, very like, meaningful. It adds up to a lot of resources, some speed up, some metals. And once this is completed, uh, you can get all of this very, very expensive stuff. And this can happen uh, more than once a week, as well as you can get hundreds of these every week. So this is a very lot of value, as well as being in one of these also has uh, its own research. So you'll see that uh, your leaders or your officers will be queuing some research here. And you'll see that you can donate some of your own uh, stuff to get some extra reward which is basically like tokens and stuff so that's really good for you to get some extra rewards as well as all of this uh, percentage attack for hitters for example if you go here uh, building speed eight percent all that stuff adds up for you if you are in that gang so all of this you're getting it it's all your research especially when you're on the territory of your gang. So all of this stuff is very meaningful. There's more and more building speed, more of the research speed, there's PvE dam. There's so much in here that you're missing out if you're not in a gang. Uh, there's even more stuff, of course, when you can do war and you can do rallies on stronger opponents, whether it be players or uh, PvE enemies from the game. Uh, there's just, you can do convoys with your group. Uh, there's just so much to be done in a gang. It is one of the main aspects of this game. And I think we'll have its own video specifically just to talk about it in the future but if you're beginning in this game join a gang and join one that fits your schedule and your language so if you're speaking a certain language there's going to be a gang led by a leader that probably speaks that language or you can start your own and recruit them or you can go into multi uh, cultural ones where there's people from everywhere and there's a translator and you can talk with people it just depends on what fits your playstyle, your gameplay and um, i'm currently in the top one so if you go in the rankings here you'll see that basically you can go and look so these are all the different gangs from my server so i'm in this one right now and there's a lot of them as you can see and all of these would be good see there's one here for french players uh there's you know there's a lot for everyone so find the one that works for you and join it as soon as you can as you start the game on a new server or on an old server you need to join one of those to get the benefits from it now this brings me into my second tip which is basically one of the other big mistakes that you really should avoid do not war other players or other gangs without your own helping you. So as you can see in this game, um, I'm basically the black color and now there's green, purple, blue, red and orange or yellow. All of these are basically enemies. Now you can make alliances and all that stuff. But if you go and fight against one color, you'll attract any player from that color to attack you. Now, if you're all by yourself, let's say I'm here fighting uh, and there's just no one else from my alliance uh, but me. And then I attack these uh, flags and all that stuff. I'll probably get demolished because by yourself, you're not that strong, especially in the early game. You don't have all the commanders. You don't have all the stuff to fill uh, big armies. And what happens is that if you fight on these uh, distributors, whether you're defending them from your own or attacking them for your enemy, and if you get attacked in them or you attack them, now the troops that you attack with have a chance of dying. Now, when you attack normal white walkers, you get a hospital. They go into the hospital, you heal them, you get them back. When you attack other players and structures, you can lose troops forever. You don't get to heal them, they just die. So all that resource, all that time training them, gone, garbage. So when you do war, make sure to do it with your gang and with your clan, your color, 
and make sure to ask your leaders or other players to help you go as a group don't just go by yourself solo because it never really works out in your favor especially if you're not a big spender and you're not a very strong player just follow the lead of the leaders and the ones who are spending money in this game now for my third tip or biggest mistake to avoid i would say that resources are something very very important in this game and you are always kind of like running out of resources one of the biggest thing about resources is also that other players can attack your city and steal your resources they can't destroy your buildings or anything but they can steal your resources so if you have a lot of resources here you can see obviously that i have three million four million of this this is not a huge amount but if i go into my items as you see here there's a lot of these resources that i have here now i recommend that you never ever use these cards before needing them like right now i have 3 million i don't need to go in here and use like see if i use all of this max of course now i can get up to um like basically don't do what i'm doing right now i could get up to a lot see i'm gonna use everything i have now that's just all i have now i'm up to 5.7 million uh, if someone attacks me all of this is stealable all of this can be removed from my account permanently and people can scout you and see oh wow, you're pretty rich i'm gonna come attack you so never use these cards uh, for resources before you need them like when you're going to be upgrading a building for example i go here and i upgrade you see it ask me if i didn't have enough i could just click here and then i could add more same here then you add as you go instead of just adding preemptively and then having a chance of losing it all now in the same line of thought do not waste your resources on buildings you do not need i see this being done all the time i've even done it myself so the priority at the beginning of the game is really getting your city hall as high level as possible so that you unlock new buildings and new tech. So if I click here, it tells me what I need in order to upgrade my city hall. So I need my defense wall and I need my wall breaker camp. So I'll go to the defense wall, I'll upgrade. What does this one need? Wall breaker camp. What does it need? Nothing. So boom, now I can upgrade it, no problem at all. Basically, what I'm trying to say is then don't go and upgrade buildings that are not in this list of requirements because you can waste a lot of resources upgrading stuff like the warehouse when you look at all my medical stations here you see like one's at 17 this one's at level 9 this one's at level 8 so i'm not upgrading them because as you see if i upgrade all the time it's all these resources going into it all the time and you're going to be starved for resources eventually and then when you upgrade this one you see 9 million 9 million i don't have enough resources and i don't want to spend tons of cds because it's very expensive and inefficient so you don't want to be wasting resources on all of the buildings you don't need Build as you go, depending on what you need. Of course, some of these buildings are going to be very good to eventually advance in levels, but I would recommend that you get your city hall and your research higher as fast as possible because these will basically mean that everything else you upgrade will become more efficient and you'll be farming more by then. And the later the game goes on, the more resources you can farm and the easier it gets to catch these buildings up. So if you do it at the beginning, you'll be slower on progression, you'll be weaker in units, weaker in research. So I would really recommend that you prioritize what is being asked in the city hall and maybe the research lab before upgrading anything else. So my next big mistake to avoid is actually two different ones. It's about speed ups being wasted on buildings. I see this being done all the time. There is a lot of buildings in this game that you can speed up. As you can see, I am currently constructing this wall breaker camp. Now, I would say that unless you need to, don't use speed ups on anything. First reason for that is, first of all, you want to save your speedups and your resources and all that stuff for when there's actually an event that asks you to push uh, power, for example. Uh, well, there's not one right now, but every week there's a different event here that will appear, basically asking you to do different tasks, and one of them is increasing your power. Now, the way you do that is by researching and building buildings, which is the most efficient way to gain power. If you have always been using your speedup as you get them when this event comes you'll be able to push out almost no power at all you will not rank high and the rankings in that game basically means the one who pushed the most power will get the most it will be similar like that and you get tons of reward for ranking high uh, it's very good there's a lot of these kind of events especially at the beginning of the game so you don't want to waste all of your stuff on nothing you want to wait for it to give you like double value not only are you going to gain power but you're going to gain a ranking in the event and get stronger and get rewards for that specifically now the other point i want to touch on is basically do not use speed ups on buildings other than i would say the research lab or the training buildings like all these camps there's exceptions but in majority of the time 
the reason I say that is that when you are, like, for example, right now, if I train these units, it's going to take 16 hours to train this many units. Now, I'm upgrading this building for 19 hours, 44 minutes. So that's 19 hours of training that I am not doing because it's actually upgrading. So it's not training. So this is when you want to use speed ups on these buildings. Now, after you've gotten all the alliance helps to make it go a bit faster, then you can use your speed ups. And I'm going to do it just to show you right now. So basically, I just go here. I'll use a few speed ups here, a few more here. And there we go. Last few minutes. Boom. Now it's next level. Now I can go and train more units. So now the next nine hours will give me a few thousand extra units instead of being completely wasted, just upgrading the building. So if you have a lot of speed ups, sure, use them in other places, especially during the power events. But do not ever be in a position where you don't have enough speed ups to boost these buildings. And the same goes for the research lab because you're not researching while it's upgrading. So when you do upgrade it, make sure you have the speed ups to finish it up right away so that you can keep upgrading and researching new stuff afterwards without wasting so much valuable time not doing anything with that building. Now, the next mistake that I see people do that I really want to recommend that you avoid is basically getting action points or energy to waste. So what I mean by that is when you go here, you can see these are action points, right? They regenerate and they use them for a uh, monkey, um, mutant monkeys, uh, mutant bruisers, alphas, all this stuff. Basically, you go around uh, the map and you see them and you fight them. And when you do, it requires uh, action point. You see here AP cost, that's action point. So when you do this kind of stuff, you can see this bar goes down, right? So I would recommend that you never log off for the night without this bar being completely depleted. What you want to do is attack with many armies like right now it's 50 every time so i can send uh, four armies right now eventually you'll be able to send five so you send all five armies against him and you'll see five armies is almost 200 so you only need to do this like five six times and then your ap will be gone see if i take all my guys here and i'll get a mutant to spawn by doing this see i'll select them all and who here we go boom see it went down by quite a lot so whenever you're gonna log off for any reason do not go without having wasted all of this first because this is free. You can use potions to enhance it and get more to do more. And then again, this goes into one of my tips. When you do have these potions to use, only use them when there's an event that rewards you for killing uh, mutants of any kind. So for example, my event right now, Territory Patrol, gives me personal points for doing just that, killing white uh, mutants right now or bruisers. All that stuff will basically tells me right here I'm going to gain personal point up until where I get this which is amazing reward on top of the most uh, successful members of the entire server will get rewards by rank so you don't want to use these items unless you need to for a specific uh, event or something special and as well as I said you don't want to log off without having used it because it's completely free value you get so much resource and stuff from the, when you kill these you see all of this so that's like 45 times 2,000 resource, 30 minutes of speed up, uh, 3,000 XP, and I got it for five times for each of them. Now I got CDs. Like it's it's very good. There's a lot of reward here. So you don't want to go let any of this go to waste. Now the same thing applies here. These rocket missions. You see that you have energy here. So whenever you do, just go around and look at what. See, gather iron here. Boom, five. You get all of these rewards. Now I'm one out of ten. And then you basically keep doing this mission. You get more. And then when you do them you'll get the reward over time this will regenerate as you can see here it refreshes and then you can just keep doing them so you don't want to log off with 10 out of 10 you want to log off with 0 out of 10 so that when you wake up the next morning it's at 10 and you can keep doing them all the time it's basically the best way for free to play to get value and farm stuff in this game for free and as a mistake that i want to highlight just to reiterate on what i just said is basically do not let any events go to waste so even if you can't play all the time or if you can't log in many times a day or whatever, when you do have events like this going on, do not let them go to waste. So we just talked about when you upgrade your power, you want to make sure that you are keeping speed up so that you can upgrade and get a high rank and get an extra reward. Same for when you're spending your action points. You want to wait for an event like this where there's going to be points for your gang and personal so that you can get all these rewards. Now, you don't always have to place high in the ranks. You can save up for many events until you can actually push like crazy and get number one, maybe. But you do never want to waste this. This is basically free reward for doing it. So my gang has done this enough points. So I get all of this 
and I get all of this, and I got all of this, and personally, now I'm gonna have to farm until I have 75,000 to get all of this, all of this, and all of this. So, obviously, you can't, you don't have to farm barbarians like crazy, or you don't have to do all this activity like crazy, but what you want to do is not let it go to waste. No events, you don't want to not complete the free stuff. This is meant for the free-to-play players, this is meant for the paying players. So make sure to at least finish the basic of any and every event in the game because this is where you get so much free value. This is extremely valuable. It's worth a lot of money, uh, dollars, if you're going to spend money in the game. So you don't want to waste any events ever because it's just too good to waste. And of course, you want to save up to push in some of them when you can. Over time, it will give you an incredibly high amount of value if you do so. Now, the one of the last mistakes that I want to highlight is about the fighters. So... Of course, everybody wants to have all the fighters and you want to upgrade them all and you want to use them all. Of course, it's very tempting. But one thing that I would recommend is that you focus on probably two to four fighters maximum for the beginning. And the reason that why I'm saying that is because you won't be able to fill marches for them otherwise. So when you send an army out of the field and let's say I select my strongest guy, which is here right now. So I'm going to select him here. There we go. And then as a secondary guy, I'm going to put him. So... You can see that I can bring 83,000 units. Now, if you look at how many units I have, obviously I can fill it in with mostly tier 2 and some tier 3 units. And here we go, I have a march full of 1,000 units. There we go. Now I can send a second march here. And same thing happens here. Now I can bring less of these wall breakers, more of these shooters. Here we go. So basically, now this one only takes 57,000 because he's pretty low level. But basically, my mistake that I see often is that people will level like 5 commanders to... Uh, level 30 for example but all five of them won't be able to have a full march without having useless units or not great units now specifically when you have these commanders this one is a hitter commander so having hitters in his army will boost them same for this guy he has pilots so when you have pilots he will boost them so you want to make sure that you level up a few commanders for them to be your primary commander in your army and that you can fill their army with troops Otherwise, if you're just sending uh, garbage troops in tier 1 and stuff, they're not going to be very strong. But if you have four of them leveled up, uh, you have four weak armies instead of two very strong ones. So I would suggest that you save your books and stuff and you choose one or two commanders at first and really power them up. Now, of course, I recommend Scott as the first one and I have an entire video on this commander for this reason. He's one of the best fighter in the game because he does the hunt and the hunt is basically what gives you a lot of value at the beginning of the game. So he's very good. So I would focus on someone like him. Then choose another one, maybe a second another one. And then focus on these fighters to go further into the game for you. Before you go into uh, leveling up so many of them. Especially like when you eventually unlock uh, these guys. Of course they're very good and they're very strong. But they're very expensive to level up. And it takes a very long time to level their skills. So don't waste too much of your energy and time into these guys. Until you can actually have them at a decent place which you will be getting later on into the game, not so early on in the game. So just focus on a few commanders that you can manage, that you can fill full armies for, and that will be basically a much stronger 2-3 armies than having 5 weak armies. Now the last mistake I want to highlight is the CDs. You can see them at the top corner here. Basically they are the premium currency of this game. Now you can buy quite a few things with these CDs if you go into uh, the shop here in your items you can buy basically anything with these CDs that you can have uh, all the speed ups all the buffs everything can be bought with CDs uh, but it's incredibly expensive to buy it just like that uh, there is going to be a VIP store coming shortly so if you go into VIP here there's going to be a VIP shop this is going to be specifically meant to offer you deals on spending CDs so I would never spend my CDs until I need them. Now, if you need a specific thing when you're buying, uh, like in a store or whatever, for like for example, when you go to the secret shop, you can buy some of this stuff already discounted. So some of this, when it's sixty percent off of the price, it's probably worth the CDs. So spend it wisely. Go on this secret shop every day and always buy the resource for resource because it gives you more than it costs. So it's always valuable. Uh, I, I always do it. It's I always recommend doing it. Now you can buy speed ups here for CDs. I would not recommend this so much. Buying with resources is fine because you can farm resources, but all of this for CDs, you know, if you really need it, maybe. Uh, otherwise, I would say save your CDs, spend it on some resource and speed up if you really want to when you have a really good discount. But otherwise, it's really, really going to be a much better thing to save them 
Um, there's going to be places to spend them, like, for example, the arena, at least you can get some uh, heroes out of it, some fighters. Uh, there's going to be a lot of ways to spend CDs in this game. There's going to be events that probably ask you to spend those CDs. So don't just waste it for resources and speed up because you can. It's much better to save. You will never go into this game if you play a long time. You'll never be at a point where you're like, oh, I have too many CDs. I should have wasted more. You're always eventually going to need them. And like I said, especially with the VIP store coming, really keep an eye on that. The patch should be coming very shortly, actually. So this is going to be a way to use up a lot of the CDs. And it's really just not something you want to waste at the beginning, you get a lot of it from your alliance and your groups of people uh, capturing stuff. And if you do well in war and if you capture a lot of the map, you're going to get a lot of them for free. This is all basically for free. I've never spent a dime in this game. So you can tell that this will be very good uh, to use eventually. And from my experience in other games like this, there's always stuff eventually down the line that come and that require a huge amount of CD before a huge amount of reward. So save it up for that. Don't waste CDs on things you don't need. That's a very bad mistake to do in this game, and it will not work out for you in the long run. It will pay off to save them. So this is about it for my guide today, guys. So I just basically want to make sure that everybody knows how to do stuff and what to do, what not to do, what to waste your um, resources on and what not to do in order to have a good experience in this game. This is obviously a pretty new game and it's evolving. There's going to be new and more content coming up. So I always say it's better to save up until you know for sure it will pay up and just basically be frugal with your items, your city, your resources. Just be more careful than you need to because it will never hurt to be careful. Always ask for advice in the chat. Always ask your leaders and your officers of your alliance and your clan and your guild and all that stuff. Just ask people. Make sure you double check. And if you always need any advice, always feel free to comment in these videos or join our personal Discord in the description. The link is there and you can come and ask us questions directly there. We're always happy to help. Uh, we're not experts, but we try our best to have the information for you guys. Now, if you like this kind of content as well as other games that are similar in strategy and fun, Make sure to subscribe to our channel because we have videos of this kind daily for many games and more Age of Apes coming up very shortly as well as really good updates on the new content and the patch and some sneak peeks coming up. So please make sure to drop a like on the video as well to encourage our channel to grow if this content was useful to you. Until next time guys, I hope you have a nice day and thank you for watching.